So, now let me go ahead and start a series of video lectures on the happy topic of unemployment. And on one level, we all know what unemployment is, but actually measuring it and getting down into the nitty-gritty of measuring unemployment, we have to do some details here. And we're going to go ahead and start if we're talking about the official unemployment rate with the Bureau of Labor Statistics, the same people who brought us the CPI, the Consumer Price Index. And every month they go out and they survey people. They survey households in particular. And I'll talk about some of the other surveys later. But they survey households and they ask people, were you employed or were you unemployed or were you not looking for work? So essentially they're going to throw people into one of three categories. If you're employed, you worked at least one hour for pay in the last two weeks. And actually, if you work without pay in a family business or farm, that actually counts as employment as well. Or you're unemployed, or you're not in the labor force. And the distinction here is often a, a tripping point for students. Unemployed is you have no job, or you haven't worked at least one week one hour for pay, one hour, have not worked at least one hour for pay in the last two weeks, and have spent at least one hour looking for work. So you're unemployed if you don't have work and you want work. And the particular definition of whether or not you want work is you've actually spent some time looking for work. Realize here that just like the bar is pretty low here for what counts as employed, we're setting the bar pretty low here for what it means to be looking for work. So, if you worked at least one hour, then you're employed. If you spent at least one hour looking for work, then that counts as unemployed. And you kind of have to set the bar somewhere, and that's going to be kind of arbitrary, and that's where they've chosen to set the bar. You're not in the labor force if you have no job and didn't look for work. So, everyone should fall into one of these three categories. The labor force is defined as all the people who are available for work. So, that is the employed plus the unemployed. So, these people are the unemployed and these people are employed. And again, just to repeat myself and make super sure everyone understands, Someone who has no job and doesn't want a job isn't counted as unemployed by the Bureau of Labor Statistics. It's only the people who don't have a job and do want one and are actively seeking one who count as unemployed. So, with all these numbers, we can go ahead and look at a couple of different statistics. We have what's called the adult civilian non-institutionalized population, which is a lot of words. So, these are all the people who could potentially be in the labor force. They're adults, so they're legal to work. They're civilians, so they're not in the military. and 
they're non-institutionalized mean, non means they're not in jail, they're not in a, a mental health facility or something like that. So these are all the people who are available for work. And again, they fall, every one of these people, by the way we've defined our categories, falls as either employed, unemployed, or not in labor force. Okay, so the labor force participation rate is going to be, well, the labor force, and remember the labor force is all the people who are employed plus all the people who are unemployed. So that's the labor force. It's the total labor force over the total adult, civilian, non-institutionalized population. And for short, I'll just call that the adult population because I don't want to write all that out again. The unemployment rate is going to go ahead and be the number of people who are unemployed over the total labor force, which is again the employed plus the unemployed. For each of these actually, let me go back and make sure I multiply by 100 to convert my decimal into a percent. Okay, so for example, Let's suppose we have 150 million people in the adult, civilian, non-institutionalized population. And suppose that 120 million of them are employed. And suppose that then we're going to go ahead and have 10 million of them are unemployed. then what are our labor force and unemployment rates? Well, our labor force participation rate is going to be this number, 120 plus 10, so that's our E plus our U, over 150, and then times that by 100. Our unemployment rate is going to be our 10 million unemployed people over 120 plus 10, and then all that times 100. So that's basically how those statistics kind of work. Now, there are other sources of data on employment. These don't enter into the official unemployment rate calculations, but they do provide some useful insight in what's going on with employment out there. We talked about the household survey already, and that's what's used to measure what's going on with particular individuals. There's also the establishment or business survey. And here, they ask businesses how many people they have employed, how many people they've had quit, how many people they've fired, how many people they've hired, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. This is sometimes called the JOLT survey. Job openings and le levers and turnovers, I think, survey is what that stands for. And so when you hear about blah, so and so many thousand jobs created, that kind of data comes from the establishment survey. And notice you wouldn't actually be able to get that data from the unemployment statistics directly because someone who goes from being employed at one job to being employed at two jobs or being employed at two jobs down to one job, that changes the number of jobs that's existing in the economy even though it doesn't change someone's employment status. 
So again, that's where our jobs created or jobs destroyed number comes from. And of course, our net job creation, and usually this is just called created, jobs created. Our net job creation is jobs created minus jobs destroyed. And actually, the economy goes through a surprising amount of churn um, in a given year. It's very, very common that it might be something like 3 million jobs created and 2 million jobs destroyed. So that, you know, on net, the economy had 1 million jobs created. Um, and that's sort of often um, hard to, to keep in mind, is that there is just a tremendous amount of churning that goes on. The other source of data on employment is unemployment insurance claims. So sometimes if you're listening to the business news or just the news in general, they'll say, you know, initial unemployment insurance claims are up or down or sideways or whatever. And there's no link between whether someone uses unemployment insurance and how they are counted in the unemployment statistics. So some people become unemployed but don't claim unemployment insurance. Some people uh, claim unemployment insurance and then they might actually be able to continue working either above the table or below the table fraudulently. Now people may think when they're answering their household survey that there's going to be some incentive to lie so that they can keep on claiming their unemployment insurance even though they're working under the table, they would actually be wrong on that. There's no uh, attempt to actually match the data and track people down on that. But that is also another source of employment data out there that we see. And what often happens is that the official unemployment statistics for the official unemployment rate and the labor force participation rate, they come out once per month. But then these other two sources of data come out between the once per month that the unemployment rate comes out. And so often these figures here are used to try and predict what the unemployment numbers will be when they come out at you know next month. Um, so they're used to predict things.